Hello and welcome to this video on how to create a Turnitin assignment for Moodle for Shaw University. And again, there is more than one way to do this. This is particularly, this video is designed particularly for uh, teachers who were teaching at Shaw University and have never used Turnitin. Yeah. First thing you're going to want to do is contact your boss, whoever that may be, and you want to get access to Turnitin. They need to get it to an account. So you'll be able to log in. You should be able to log in just using your SHA email address. So that's the first thing you need to do. So contact your boss right away. Get that squared away. Now you can still get some stuff done um, before you have this login. Um, but there is one feature you absolutely need to use, or not need to, but will want to use, that you can only access by getting this way. Yeah, so enough on that. So again, first step, contact your boss and say, I need Turnitin access so I can log in. All right, so let's go ahead and set up a Turnitin assignment on your Moodle shell. Okay, so um, this is just a continuing part of a series of setting up a class for the first time. So if we go back to the professional learning uh, shell here, which is our English 110 shell, again, one of the required assignments is just writing project three, writing project three. So it is required that all students do writing project three um, regardless of who the teacher is, you need to do this assignment and we're going to use this rubric for it. Um, what we're going to do as far as to set this uh, assignment in Moodle is use Turnitin. So how we do that is, so again, this is the uh, the class I'm currently building, it's English 1107. And again, the goal here is you build one class. So let's say you have five English 110 classes. You can build one class um, and then just copy it, copy that class over uh, to the different courses with making some just a few minor changes. Yeah, that's the goal, and we'll get to that in other videos. But so let's figure out, so let's just say that this writing project three, uh, we figured out that it's going to be due in this week right here, November 6th to the 12th. Now, I don't, since we don't have the fall schedule set yet, I don't know exactly if this is going to be the week or not, but again, just for giggles, we're showing you the steps of how to do it. So what you're going to do is, again, if you haven't done so, you need to make sure that you have turn editing on. Right now it says off, so if I turn it off, um, you'll see that I can't make any changes. Oh, where did all my editing stuff go? Okay, then that's the problem. Because if you go down here, you're like, you can't make any edits to these different weeks. So we want to make sure we turn editing on. And again, let's jump down to November 6th. Okay, so this is going to be an activity. So we're going to click on add an activity, and it's going to be a turn it in assignment, and it's two. Why two? Uh, why not? I don't know. I don't know what happened to one. Maybe two's the sequel. I don't know. But this this is what you're going to click on. Turn it in assignment two. Okay. So you've done that. It's going to spin and then it's going to allow you to start to set up the assignment. So I'm going to call this writing, oh, I can almost type, writing project three. Um, final draft. Why not? Okay, now, and here you can put a summary. Now, what I do um, personally is that, um, if I look over at, let's see, I'm gonna pause for a second here. Okay, I'm back again. Now, so here's writing project three from a previous class. This is what I put as far as information for every single uh, assignment for, that I do. I'm gonna I'll call, copy that and I'll go back to the one I'm working on, and I'm gonna paste it in here, okay. Now let me just explain a couple of things. I use, woo, I use, uh, I make sure that they use doc or docx for every single file they submit. For me, it's because I edit in Word. I do everything digitally. I use the Word document files. There's a bunch of different sources and tools you can use in Word to make your life a lot easier. So I explain you need to submit it as a doc or a docx file. Plus that way, they're not sending me files that I can't open. Okay. Now, I put note, be very careful that you upload the correct file, okay? And the reason why that's a thing is that students have figured out, and unfortunately, it's one of those things where you have to kind of uh, punish everybody for the bad kids doing some things, you know, punishing everybody. But there are some students who figured out, oops, I didn't finish my final draft. I know I'll upload the rough draft as a final draft and claim that I accidentally submitted the wrong file. When in fact they haven't finished the final draft and they're just trying to buy more time. Okay, I've had students openly admit that they do this. Okay, so to avoid that, I say, look, you have to make sure you're submitting the correct file. This is also a life lesson that they need to triple check to make sure they are submitting the correct file. 
So I say they will earn a zero on the assignment if they do want to follow it, if they upload the wrong file. Okay. Now again, we're teaching them revision. Okay. So if they basically submit um, the the rough draft again, it's also a zero. But there needs to be significant changes. Now this is vague, significant. Okay. That's really up to you as the teacher on what you're going to figure out as you know what is the whatever. But again, if you use if you have everything done as a doc or docx file, there's a compare feature in Word. And I'll post a video on how to do that, where you can pull up both documents and it will show you exactly what they've changed between the two documents. So it's very easy to see what kind of revisions they've made and how many they've made. Okay. And also, if you plagiarize your any part of your essay, that's a reminder that they will get a zero if they do any of those things, because plagiarism is it continues to be a big problem. Um, probably four to five students every single assignment still plagiarize. Crazy, even though I teach it and I have it right here and I explain it and remind them. Yeah. So I put that there and then I click on display description on the course page. Okay. So that's just so something they'll see on the page. Okay. Now um, it says submission type, any submission type. Um, I choose that as a file upload because I want them typing it in Turnitin. and I want them to actually upload a doc or docx file. So I change that. Keep that to one. Uh, keep that. Allow submission type of any file. I just put. Uh, no okay um and then for here for the grade display show, show grades as a faction uh, as a fraction well all my major assignments are out of 100 percent so you can either do a percentage or out of 100 um, either way if you have your full points be with 100 then it doesn't really matter but if you know if the only thing is worth 20 then you maybe want to use percentage so they can say why did i get a 13 on this well it's not really a 13 it's 13 out of 20 something okay um, if they just keep that the way it is, yeah, then I would. Uh, change, so, now, you can do different things as far as parts. Um, I just call this WP3 um, final draft. Okay. And then you can put the, the start date and when it's due. So in this case, it would be due, I think, what did we say? It was like the, I'm just making this date up, November. And then I always have my due dates be um at night and I have it be a five minutes too because there's some settings in, in Moodle where you can't switch you can't choose fifty nine. You can only choose fifty five, which I don't know why. So I changed everything just to fifty five. Just a thing. Okay. And then you could also choose a start date if you wanted to. Um now the other thing we need to change here is the grade. Okay. And again, so maximum grade gonna keep that as hundred because this is set up as hundred. Now the grade category, now again you've set up your grades already, so you can change that over to that would be right in project three. Woo. Again, if you haven't set up your grade book yet, then you can't do that. And you have to go back and create your grade and then go back and change it. It's a, it's a headache. Okay. Um as far as the originality report options, you can choose whether allow you whether you allow submissions after the due date. Some teachers don't allow any work after the due date. I do. I do 25% uh, off for every day that it's late. Okay. Um, again, they check the plagiarism report. Okay. Da, da, da. You can just read through this. Okay. Uh, grade mark options. This is where you put the rubric. Right now it has no rubric. Oh, no. Okay. Well, we'll come back to this later. We'll, we'll add a rubric later. So, but just be aware that's where you add the rubric. Okay. So let's go ahead and save and return to course. Okay. So again, we'll come back to the rubric thing here in just a minute. Okay, so now I have created, and that is, uh, that assignment is in there now. Yay! Okay, now I need to do a couple other things to make this even better. Now, under the shell, you can also see that we have the rubric here. Turn it in rubric for we're writing project three. So again, this is just a, some, if you just click on this and try to open it, it won't really do anything. It's not much fun for anybody. Okay, but if you click on it now, it should just download it automatically. There it is over there. And then you can save it somewhere. I've saved it um, right here in just a folder. Okay, so this is just the file, and it uses a, yeah, it's, it's a weird RBC file that you can't really see. So if I go back to my assignment, go back to that class, okay, now I need to get that rubric in. So I'm going to go back in, I'm going to edit the settings for this uh, paper. Now you could have downloaded the rubric ahead of time, that's fine, you could have done that too. Okay, so we're going to go back down here to the grade mark options. Now it says no rubric right now. So what I want to do is, now I'm trying to think, they, they made some changes, so I may have to play around this for a second. I'm going to click on the launch the rubric manager. Okay. 
and then it's spinning, it's spinning. Okay, now it'll bring up the rubric. Now I've already got a ton of rubrics that I've already loaded uh, that I use for all sorts of different things. What you want to be able to do is you want to import that rubric that we're using. So what you would do is you click over here on this side, okay? And you want to import, import, and then you just find that file and you just go whoop, and drag it over and it uploads it, okay? And it's five paragraph essay. Ta da! It has been imported. Yay! And then you just hit close. Okay, so then when it comes time to choose the rubric, then you can just click on this and it says, yeah. Okay, we, we haven't graded anything yet, so this is okay, so that's fine. We're just going to check on this. And then we would find whatever rubric that was. Now, if you don't have any rubrics, it would be pretty easy to find. Um, you know, because I have so many, it's like, oh, which one is it? Okay, well, it just happens to be the five-paragraph essay. That's the one it is. Because this assignment is a five-paragraph essay. Okay, and then save and return to the course. Okay, and I'll show you how to grade using... Uh, turn it in in a different video. So this is just showing you how to set it up. Okay, so now I have the rubric assigned to it, and I've got the rubric. Yeah, so the rubric's assigned. Um, they can get in here. They can do the thing. Now, remember how I told you that you needed to get this uh, access to oops, this one here to turn it in? And so here's the other thing that you need to be able to do, and you notice that I couldn't do it just from the Moodle page. So once you log in, you will see your classes. Now, again, these are not uh, this isn't showing the one I'm currently working on because it's not an active class. Um, but I'm going to show you one that I am working on when I'm teaching a summer class. So this is the summer class I'm teaching right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that class. Okay, and this shows the different um, assignments that I have set up for this class. These are already turned in assignments which I built in Moodle. So for the, for the one we just did, you just see one. You just see writing project three because that's the only one we've done. Okay. Notice here, this is the paper, okay, so it's like this. Now, here's a cool feature, which would be like, oh, now it's not perfect, but any help you can get is good help. So you click over here onto More Actions, and you want to hit Edit Settings. Okay, now this is, again, I've already created this assignment in Moodle. We just are now going in to turn it in, and we're going to add uh, an option that we want it to do. Okay, so um, these are the same things. You notice all this? Oh, originality Report. Bibliography stuff, small sources, okay, well, that's fine. All this is the same, because um, you can even see the, the rubric manager I'm doing. But you'll notice right down here, this is the magic one. Da-da! Okay, so if we go back to this one here, and we hit Edit, Edit Settings again, you will notice that on this, when we go down here, there is no, it doesn't say ETS thing anywhere. Right? There's no, there's no option for that. Okay? It doesn't say that anywhere. It's like, well, what, what is, what's that? What is this thing? So when we go back to here, ETS reader settings. It's a beta thing, but it, it enables a grammar checker using the e-reader technology. You want to click yes, and then I would select use advanced U.S. dictionary, and then you can choose what you want it to check for: spelling, grammar usage, mechanic style. I have them do all of it. Okay, and then I hit submit. So, what that does is when I go to grade the paper, it'll automatically check the grammar and spelling of the student submissions and it'll mark it on the paper. Now, I can go through and determine whether I agree with what the computer said, or I can even add ones that I think the computer missed. But instead of having to do all of it, it actually helps me do it myself. So, again, any help you can get is good help. Is it perfect? No. Is it a good thing? Yes. Okay. So, this video again was designed just to show you how to add a Turnitin uh, class or sorry, assignment to a Moodle class, which is what we did. And so there it is. And now if people are ready to grade it. People are ready to submit it. And then you can grade it, which will be shown in a different video. But uh, again, so that's how you set up a thing. And it's already set up also, so when you grade it, it'll go directly into the gradebook and go where it should go. So, all right. All right, go back and rewatch the video if you get stuck, because it's a little tricky. All right, you can do it.